Hello, welcome back to the Trading Triangle once again on a Saturday of all days. Um, how are you doing, Kay? I'm doing great. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, happy Saturday to everybody. You know, uh, I know it's a little bit different from our usual routine, but hey, we got to do what we got to do, right? Exactly. And it's going to be a quite weird ending this today because I'm going to think it's Sunday and I'm going to be doing, uh, getting ready for my markets, updating you know, certain things. But I don't actually have to do that until tomorrow, so it'd be nice to have the evening off. That is true. Um, and I think we're both heading out after this anyway, so yeah. Yeah, let's come in, shall we? Just uh, thank you once again, Wolf, for letting us use the platform. We really, really appreciate it. And obviously, we are just a couple of guys looking at charts, and uh, it's not financial advice. It's, it's not for and, and make sure you subscribe to Wolf, and you subscribe to the Trading Triangle on YouTube. Uh, let's not forget that. Absolutely, absolutely. And obviously, as always, we'll go through what the kind of market as it happens. We'll go through our chosen charts, and we'll go through and the audience request at the end. Um, so if you put your requests in the comments as usual and we will get to them towards the end of the stream we we'll always look forward to looking uh, through those because so obviously it gives us ideas and it also gives you another perspective when looking at the chart as well so shall we jump into the week's action yeah let's do it sweet here we go feels weird doing this on saturday isn't it so it is, it is. Yeah. we had apple nvidia and amazon looking good um not many Companies looking too bad. We've got Meta there, minus 1.43. Um, we've got AMD right in the bottom corner there, uh, bottom left corner, should I say. It's minus 5%. Um, what else have we got here? Nothing else really jumping off the page. Banks doing pretty well. What else do you see here, Kay? No, nothing much. It was pretty muted market. Um, mm. And I think when you go to the next slide, what's interesting is that the WIX is still pretty much in the, I think, 1920 range. Generally, WIX doesn't stay in that range after the spike up it generally comes down i don't know why it's there for a couple days couple weeks now actually think about it well yeah so you anticipate a bit of a move there perhaps yeah because maybe they're waiting for earnings mm. maybe that's the reason but yeah i think uh i think most of the market is basically waiting for the earnings and you know with netflix coming up earnings i know you covered netflix maybe yeah. you can throw some light on what were the some highlights on netflix and then tesla coming up next week so yeah yeah, Netflix did really well. They're really surprising, actually, from a personal point of view, because I thought they'd do quite, you know, meet expectations, sure, maybe beat a couple. Um, but they did really, really well. They beat on revenue, beat on EPS really well. And the month-over-month -month subscribers count really, really increased um, from 4 million to 5.4 million, which well, 4 million was expected, but 5.4 million was actually achieved, which I think is absolutely incredible, um, to be quite honest with you, because obviously there's lots of different streaming platforms, but... It just goes to show that obviously Netflix is still the king of streaming and um, probably will be for quite some time, um, to be quite honest with you. I think just one last thing, we'll just touch on Tesla here, 0.26%. That's probably the flattest week ever for Tesla, isn't it? It is, it is. And also, uh, if you look at the Tesla chart, and maybe what we can do is uh, on the uh, during the audience request time, we can take a look at Tesla chart. It's after the gap down that we had, after the robo taxi event that we dropped that we had, it's pretty much sideways trading. And that gap fill still hasn't been filled. I think we are basically waiting for the earnings. It might get a little bit more spicy, closer to the earnings. Mm -hmm. um, we might see some, you know, uh, gap fill. And then right after earnings, we could see a drop. Typical. Buy the rumor, sell the news. Yeah, I think a very interesting week coming up for Tesla, that's for sure. Earnings after the market close on Wednesday. Um, I won't be covering it or sharing it because I will be in Spain. So I'll be looking forward to that. Next on the uh, next on the slideshow, we've got just obviously put to call 0.66. Various things are there on the left. Again, another quiet week coming up, in my opinion. We do have lots of Fed speakers kind of in and around um, each and every day. Um, so just be careful if you are day trading or if you're hiring, uh, holding high leverage positions. Um, obviously, jobs data, again, normally on Thursday. We're sitting in extreme greed. Does it feel like that, Kay? Um, I think so. I think so. Uh, the protocol ratio generally is around 7.7 7, and now it's starting to decrease. Now, keep in mind this, we're talking about S&P 500 protocol ratio. It's not like, uh, uh, so it's, it's, a, it's, it's, you know, you can tell that we are getting into the extreme greed. Um, and generally in the November, December should be a better month. So, and, and you know, you can see S&P 500 making newer highs every single week. 600 right around the horizon yeah, and 500 for qqq right around the horizon wow yeah we'll jump into those charts obviously just in, in a second um but obviously what was i going to say i can't remember what i was going to say 
Yeah. Anyway, moving on, it's probably something really important. <laughs> um, so obviously with that, we've got earnings next week, really kicking off this week, but I think it's the week after that people are really anticipating as you've got you know, loads of big tech companies. But the biggest one here you can see on the screen is Tesla. Mm -hmm. I'm personally looking at Enphase um, just because they've had a really tricky couple of years to be quite honest with you in terms of interest rates and product supply, et cetera. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if they can shine some light on some future quarters there. Um, because, uh, like I said, they're in a bit of a hole, to be quite honest with you. That's the only one I'm really looking forward to. Obviously, I'm, like I said, I would have been in Spain, so I'm a bit of a quiet week in terms of the stock market. So Enphase and Tesla, I'd definitely keep my eye on. Anything from you there, Okay. Uh, not much. Um, maybe just look at how IBM and 3M and GM, they perform, but I'm not going to be covering any of those stocks. Nice. Are you in, into quantum scape at all? We got that one. Quantum scope? No, I, 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 no, I know it was. It's a pretty. Um, what is that? Meme, meme stock? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I thought it was just a, a semiconductor stock. Quant? Is it? No, that's. Oh, I think of Qcom. I'm thinking of Qcom. That's Qualcomm. Yeah, yeah Qu anyway. this quantum scope. I think is that a. I thought that was a meme stock. Oh, one stock yeah. that I I might just keep an eye on is ServiceNow that I see now yeah, on, yeah. The, on the same day as uh, Tesla. We've spoken about that one before and of course you've got new brands who you know they supply sharpies so that's always really important <laughs> anyway <laughs> we've got the first chart of the day and this is the spy chart i basically highlighted um on the spy chart and the qqq chart the week's action um you can see it's just kind of doing what a bull market does it's just you know you've got red days you've got green days um but it's just kind of gliding upwards and that's probably what we might see up until 600. um i know oh that's what i was going to say earlier about four years ago when I started investing, um, it was obviously the election because it's four years ago. And October was not a good month. And I'm really surprised to see the basically the price action in Oct October now being so positive. I'm just wondering if we get a bit of reaction after the election in terms of a negative fashion. Well, I, in my opinion, I think we will definitely get a reaction because see, regardless of the, the fact who wins and whoever you want to support, uh, the market does not like uncertainty, right? So right now, who's going to win? We don't know. It could be Trump. It could be Harris. But on 6th or on the end of 5th or 6th, it will be clear whether we are going in this direction or this direction and the market can adjust. Companies can adjust. They can. They now know which policy the, the government is going to you know implement and then they can take action accordingly. I think the certainty is going to definitely help the market move forward. I, I think the 600 is right on the horizon for probably right after election day i wouldn't be surprised if we actually get a big pop uh whoever wins after this yeah and as you can see on the screen there, it's only 2.64 percent away which i think is crazy obviously last week it's three percent something um just ever so gradually getting um getting closer and closer to that 600 mark the spy on the contrary to that if we do get a bit of a downturn we do break this trend line i'm looking at 571 that's where the volume is um, some people might have 574 because obviously the previous resistances I've kind of drawn there. Um, but I kind of point my my kind of sword towards the volume these days um, just because obviously volume is the market essentially. So are you, any levels you're, you're looking at for downside? Uh, I I don't know. Um, the trend has not changed for the downside yet. Until, until we see some selling and they break the trend line, I, I don't see any reason to think that we'll be getting a downside. Yeah. And that's the, the purpose of not putting the um, the reason, sorry, that I've not put the moving averages on here. Just because if that trend line doesn't break, then why should the moving averages break? Um, right. So anyway, moving on to the QQQ. Similar sort of story, just colliding up. But we do have obviously a break of the, the, the trend line from last week. So again, I've got the box there. You can see that's the week's trading action. Um, what I like to see is a trend line breakout. And we kind of had that with, with the NASDAQ, which I really quite enjoy. Um, especially for obviously holding many, many tech stocks as we, we probably both do. So we've got the break up above here towards kind of 498-ish and we came back down and retested it on Wednesday and we've kind of pushed up a little bit ever since then and I do anticipate maybe a move towards 500 this week. Um, I've been going to be bold and say it. I think we get that um, fairly easily, maybe within you know Tuesday, Wednesday's price action um, just because it's not that far away percentage-wise. I think it's only about 1%, 2%. Um, so I think we see that. Um, what happens at this level? Completely different story. Could be obviously a double top situation here, or we could just break straight through it. You know, come out to the election, etc. Any thoughts on the QQQ? 
No, I think you hit the nail on the head. The 50281 is the resistance. 500 will be the psychological level. So if it breaks, the chances as we might still continue to see an uptrend. Uh, but the chart is different for QQQ versus the what the SPY, right? SPY is like a you know classic uh, higher high, whereas in QQQ we saw pullbacks a lot more. Um, but I think key Tesla and next week all the big tech, the big seven, the Mac seven. Um, reporting earnings, you know, Apple, Amazon, Google, Meta. I, I think next two, three weeks will be crucial for QQQ. Yeah, exactly. I mean, lots of uh, tech groups in in the QQQ, isn't there? So that could definitely move that. Good point there, Kay. Um, yeah, that's kind of it for Spy and QQQ. Obviously, as mentioned before, do put your tickers in the comments. I know we've got a couple already. We've got JBLU and Tesla. Um, so we're happy with those to so keep, keep them coming. We're happy to you know, go through a few of them at the end of our suggestions, well, suggestions, end of our charts. Um, and with that, we'll jump into my first chart. I feel like we're going a bit quickly today. Okay. Maybe yeah. we'll just slow down slightly. Okay. <laughs> first one up, I've got Giraffe Kings. Um, I've been banging on this one for a couple of weeks, and uh, it's just basically traded flat for a couple of weeks. So my, you know, my theory is still there. It's just taking a bit longer um, for that theory to play out. Okay. The last, the last two days, we can see it's a bit erratic. Thursday came all the way down to the 50 moving average and the trend line support. Um, so that would have been, in my book, a good time to enter potentially, uh, just because it's you know two points of confluence. And we would have, would have liked to see a bit of volume down here, but I guess that whole bulk is still a bit of volume. And then Friday, we kind of gapped up, touched the 200, and then came back down to kind of the middle parts. So just a crazy couple of days and we kind of ended just above the middle which i guess is bullish um but ultimately what i'm trying to look for here is a break above the 200 moving average which is obviously this um red line kind of punching through yeah the ultimate level is 40 i've said 40 for the last couple of weeks so you know ultimately get above that but i think it's finding it hard to get through the 200 moving average you can see it you know, five times there twice there um and another couple of times here so I guess that's the major resistance as it is for many stocks um, around this sort of market cap. And uh, last point on DraftKings, I would say just these nice higher lows. So obviously we set the low beginning of August down here, uh, another high low, high low, another high low here. Um, so that's good to see, but I just really wanted to get through $40. Um, and the logic side of things as well, I'll, I'll just wrap it up with this. Um, the logic behind this is that obviously sports season is back, but, um, basketball, uh, football, obviously English football as well. I imagine you guys bet on as well because obviously it's so popular within the world. Um, so basically, sports are back, and you can just—I know it's a sin stock, and it's probably not the most healthy stock in the world, but you know it's a—it's uh, a—it's a, it's a money-making opportunity. So I'm going to have a look at it either way. So yeah, any thoughts on this one, Kay? Before I no, this is this is there? interesting, and uh, we have Dina on the chat. She says Neo chart looks very similar to DKNG, so we'll definitely cover Neo as well. But I, I agree with you. And I think the 200 day moving average is the key. Um, if it breaks and make and, and makes that as a support level, I think we can probably see some uh, new highs. But until the, we get some catalyst and there is the, there's no catalyst. The earning is what? Three weeks away, 11.7, right? So that's three weeks away. Yeah. And unfortunately, we have 18 down revisions on the EPS for DraftKing. Um but hey, we have seen uh, we have seen this before. Uh, market can stay rational. We can you know see some kind of a news coming out on DraftKing, um, and with the season coming up, we could see an uptrend. But for now, I think there's no trade until we actually see a break from the 200 day and makes that as a support. Yeah, unless you did a high risk opportunity and got in here, obviously with that kind of free. Yeah, of course. Yes, yeah. so if you if you already on a trade, then that's a different situation. Yeah. Uh, no, definitely one to look at. It's definitely on my watch list. Um, it has been for a couple of weeks, as I mentioned. So that's DraftKings. Um, we've got a couple more suggestions. Oh, no, yeah. actually, Coin. I think people are very anticipated around kind of Bitcoin uh, in this last week. It's, it's moved really nicely. It's broken that trend line. So maybe we could bring up Bitcoin as well. i just touch on that. I, I think I'd like to do that personally. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. BTC. We'll jump on that one. And without further ado, we move on to the next one. And this is Micron, um, semiconductor-related stock. And I like this basically to close this gap that was created in uh, what's that mid July and it's about 128 probably should have put the actual amount on that um, but you could also extend that to 132 because there's a big odd volume bar here as you can see on the right side of the screen 
Um, really, really simple. This one is pushed through this 200 moving average and the trend line. And it's looking like it's going to come back down and retest this area roughly around kind of 109. And then obviously hopefully make that move towards 128. So there's a good kind of 10% in there. Um, and that's kind of all I've got to say on this one. Just a really clean, simple setup for everyone to kind of enjoy and look at. Um, any thoughts with, with Mike Trump? I think it's a good setup. And uh, just to add from a fundamental standpoint, you have a strong buy from Wall Street and buy from all the other analysts as well. So yeah. I, I feel like this is definitely in the news. And, you know, the stock is not like, like from a 52 week range it's right in the middle so it's not like overbought uh, or closer to a 52 week high so uh, short interest is three percent so nothing too great not, nothing too crazy i think um i'm gonna urge a bit of homework for you and the watchers have a look at micron on the weekly chart i think it looks pretty good as well on the weekly chart um so go ahead and, and then do that a bit later on and you can make your own decisions around micron um so with that, obviously, you can follow me on X. I'm very, very vocal at the moment, just kind of really love hitting X for some reason. Um, not so much on YouTube, although I am streaming lots of earnings calls and giving my thoughts throughout the calls. So I obviously really enjoy doing that. And the newsletter, of course, is a little bit quiet at the moment, but you know, who knows? I might bring it back soon. Um, so obviously do subscribe to that as well. And the handle for that is at Sean Trades with a little bit of an underscore, but I take it away because it doesn't look so good. So uh, yeah, anyway, with that, We'll jump over to Kate's first chart. Awesome. Appreciate it, man. So the first one, so for, for a change that I decided not to do semiconductors has been a while. Uh, <laughs> I did, by the way, on my channel, I will be posting a video next week, early next week on NVIDIA uh, since NVIDIA earning is coming up and there are some very good setups for NVIDIA. So, but this is not the time for it. The first one is GitLab. And um, GitLab, interestingly, what is happening in, the, in this nice setup is if you notice the DraftKing, had the same was it drafting or micron drafting with the 200 day moving average right um so this one yeah so micron with 200 yes average. 200 day moving average. so yeah. the same thing is happening with uh gitlab is that you have uh they are sitting right around the 200 day moving average i think right below the 200 day moving average and the stock has been you know below that for a really really long time so it's almost like since what mid of may once they broke down the stock has been trending below the 200 day for a very long time um from a fundamental standpoint, the stock has, you know, year over year, they have gained 31% on the revenue side. Uh, the current price targets for a lot of analysts are around the $70 mark. So, and there are 22 up revisions for the upcoming earnings. Earnings is in 12.4. So we still have a lot of time. Now, when we had the gap down, which was back in March after that disastrous earnings. Uh, we, from, from the current standpoint, we have a 20% upside for that gap fill. Now, do I expect that to happen right away? No, but from a long-term standpoint or even a mid-term standpoint, GitLab is getting a lot more traction by the analysts, which means that they are covering GitLab a lot more. And GitLab, because of the type of the software it is and the services it provides, and if you don't know, I would highly recommend. If you're interested in the SaaS space, definitely check out GitLab. This is becoming a lot more talked about stock. So I wouldn't be surprised in the next three to six months, we start to seeing GitLab going back above the $65, $75 range. And SaaS stocks do climb. We just had two years of pretty bad two years for all SaaS stocks. Pretty much every single SaaS stock, you can pick it up. So a good setup. No trade as of right now, because again, we will still want to see the 200 day break and stays above the 200, make sure it tests and doesn't break down. And once we know that that's the established support level, that's when the trade will take place. But something for your for you to keep on your radar if you are interested in the SaaS space. Yeah, I really like this one um, from a fundamental point of view, as you just mentioned, and actually a technical point of view. Um, and I mean, you know what I'm looking at here, and it's a breakout trade. And as, as you mentioned, it's that kind of 200 moving average level, but also there's resistance around this level as well. Yeah. Um, and then just a really simple gap close around that $70 mark. But what I also like is the, the lower heights, higher lows, sorry. So we set the ultimate low here, kind of beginning of August, and then higher low, higher yep. low. Yep. And obviously, maybe we come back down here and we test it again, and then make another high, higher low and push through that level finally. Um, so yeah, I, I really like this one. I've written it down with a little bit of details as well. So I've got that ready for ready for the week ahead. I really appreciate it, okay? Yeah, great. Okay, next one. Oh, I've lost it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. 
Yeah. Next one. Um, so this this chart is not as clean as the previous one. By the way, I don't know if you guys noticed or not. You might have seen that my chart a little bit different this time around. So what mm-hmm. I removed, I removed the grid lines. Oh, I used to have grid lines on the chart. I removed the grid lines because there was just too many lines and I was getting a little yeah. uh, annoyed. Uh, this one, unfortunately, I still have the Fibonacci levels because it's, it's important to show these. Um, so the earning is coming up. Oh, funny thing. The earning is on 1025, same day as uh, Tesla. So I might cover the earnings. I, I don't know if I will or not, but I might cover. Uh, this stock, you have 33 up revisions. So analysts are expecting the EPS. They will have a beat. And unlike GitLab, where it's a 30% upside for the gap fill, this is only a 7% upside for the gap fill. So might not be a big trade in place. But because it has been trading at this range of $80, like between 78 and 81 is basically this is the sideways movement on the Shopify stock. I love the stock. This is in my long-term portfolio as well. I continue to buy and add to my portfolio, but I trade the stock often as well. Um, so honestly, I like the stock, how it's performing. Earnings are coming up. So for the earnings play, um, I generally might, I might not do the earnings play, but from an option standpoint, I might be selling cash secured put right around the 75 uh, or right around the uh, the 20 day SMA, which is what, 81. Um, yeah. But that's how I'm looking at this one. Um, 7% upside, what do you think? Yeah, I, I do like it. It's not as clean, I think, as the, the GitLab the one. GitLab, yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, as, as you know, for my strategy, should we say, or what I look out for, um, just because I don't really look at shop as a, an opportunity either. I never really had it on my on my watch list, like ever. I know people have done well out of it, and I, obviously I like that. Um, and obviously, hope you do well of it as well. Um, but from a technical point of view, I don't really. I'm not. Basically, I prefer GitLab. Um, yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. because see, not every stock will fancy you. Yeah, and also there could be a potential of an RSI diversions here, just looking at the technical side. So we've got a bit of a higher here on um, the RSI with this price action, and then the price action goes higher, but the actual relative strength goes lower. Um, doesn't really mean much going into earnings, but just kind of keep an eye on that if you yeah. are looking to yeah. kind of go along, because that is typically a signal for it to reverse it to the downside. Um, whether we get that or not, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to earnings on Wednesday. I won't be covering it, of, of course, but I will be watching it if you're covering it. Why not? You know, I always have right. like to take as much information as possible. Who knows? It might get me to Shopify finally. <laughs> nice. Okay. Should we move on? That's, that's it from my side today. I keep not clicking on the right thing. Here we are. <laughs> All right. So yes, you can find me on X. I do post pretty much every single day. Um, some of those trades that I take during the week, I do post those as well. So definitely yeah. follow me there. Um, YouTube channel. Um, you know, been been on YouTube for like four plus years now, man, or four years, I think. So yeah, so it's a uh, it's get, great. I post videos pretty much weekly. A couple good videos are coming up. Uh, one will be on Nvidia. So definitely make sure if you're interested, follow me there. Uh, Substack, not so much, but yeah, feel free if you want to follow there. Investk, and let's jump into the audience request. Yeah, sweet. I think we had a couple on Twitter. Um, so X, we had Microsoft and Spy. Obviously, we've done Spy. Yep. And Microsoft, um, we can cover. We can add to the list. That's for Justin. Who does regularly pop in every week? So we will definitely get to that one, Justin. Okay. We do appreciate your watching, and I will just set up the stream so uh, you get the list together. Yes, I have my together. list here. Um, we don't want to see that. There we go. So I have this. I have somebody blue balls DC. Uh, check B L U B O L. Is that what is that? I've never heard of. I'm that. not too sure if that's a serious comment. Uh, I must admit. Okay. All right, then I we mean, can try. I mean, there's not many six letter tickers, let's put it that way. You get five in the OTCs, but not many six. Yeah, I, I don't know what B L U B O L is. Not it's probably just a, it might just be a meme coin. Uh, um, right, I've got that ready. Here we go. Okay, so we can start with the first one, which is uh, JetBlue, J B L U. JetBlue. Wow, okay. There's a good couple of days, didn't they? Did they report earnings or something? Oh, no, they haven't. Is this related uh, to Boeing, perhaps? It... So JetBlue is a is a, is an airline company. Let me see what's going on. Yeah, I've sent them around. Solid results from United Airlines. Do, do, do. That's, it's, it's, a, it's a big move. So it's a massive move. What happened? So doing, uh, might have a bit of news here. 
that's Spirit fine. Airlines did. Uh, that's Spirit Airlines, though. That's different. Okay. They report earnings on 10-29. Yeah, so that's um, Tuesday following. Correct. And they have uh, seven up revisions and Ooh, three down that. revisions. We can see very clear resistance here at 750-ish. That was a pretty mm-hmm. clean break also, though. Yeah, really clean break. So this in this particular case, because there's no real catalyst or real news event, um, obviously it's probably related to other airlines, which we get. That's that's not that's not a problem. We've got uh, Boeing, I think, reporting earnings this week as well. Um, so without that really concrete news, I would expect us to maybe come back to 750 or 760 even, maybe this bit here, and that would be a good entry for me personally because that's a textbook breakout trade. Um, for you know my strategy at least so yeah definitely adding this one to the, the watch list thank you very much a girl and her fork and i think mm-hmm. she mentions that uh, american airlines did also have a significant run so let's take a look at that so I imagine across the board of airlines then it must have been yeah actually she's right some massive and you know the the interesting with that run american airlines uh, has pretty much filled that gap oh yeah Almost, very, very close. Yeah. Gap fill is at 13.44. Um, and also breaking above that 200 million average as well. That's, that's pretty important for sure. Exactly. I think the, the resistance definitely is going to be the 13.45 on American Airlines. It's quite a turnaround really for, for both airlines. I mean, this one, for example, from the lows up to where we are now, that's 43%. It's quite a move. Yeah. Anyway, what's up next? Next up is Tesla. Uh, here we go. We we'll spend a bit of time on this one, I think. Yes, this you, one is very, very interesting. Um, what do you anticipate for their earnings, perhaps? Obviously, no I, I think for, for the earnings leading up to the earnings, they will probably do a gap fill. And uh, most likely, it's going to be a sell-off from there. And and the reason, and I, let me tell you the reason why I think. So the delivery numbers were okay, nothing great. The robo event kind of gave away that nothing is ready right now. It's going to be coming up in January, Q, you know, 2025, California and um, um, Texas, they will have full self-driving. And the robo taxi will come in 2027. So the problem is that for long-term investors, that's not a problem. You can buy the stock, buy and hold or keep adding it. Problem is for traders, problem is for analysts who are looking from quarter over quarter. So if nothing is happening this quarter, nothing is happening next quarter, guess what's happening? The stock is going down. Yeah. That's what I think. I mean, we've seen that a bit with Rivian as well, and it's a very different market cap, but similar yeah. sort of industry. Um, they posted really good um, kind of you know, really good vehicles, but they posted it for 2026. So you can't really expect any revenue to come from them anytime soon. And also does the cash that they have burn before they even get to that point so in other words they need to get an investment some sort of thing so you know kind of um looking at the future three or four quarters you kind of get a bit a bit sticky and you kind of turn away from it um obviously not the same sort of story as tesla but kind of the same sort of thing uh, are we seeing a little bit of trepidation around the future of tesla at least immediate future that's why we're seeing this price action um and that's why i think we actually break down to 200 um Dividend Dog actually posted a tweet today around um, Tesla and kind of where he thinks it's going, or where he what you know, he was asking other people where he think where we think it's going. Sorry, and I said obviously heading down to two hundred, um, not only technically but also um, logically, and obviously for those reasons we just mentioned. But technically, we'll, we'll jump to the chart here. Obviously, the daily is kind of slowly moving up. I know you said about a gap fill. Did you think this gap fill the two thirty? Yeah, yeah. The, the the gap the gap down that we had right after the robo event. So, that gap, I think, is going to get filled leading up to earnings. And then we may see a sell-off. Because I think that there are two things that are happening for Tesla. One is there is a lot of anticipation on the new Model Y Juniper when that release is going to come out. Because that's that's the new change that there's going to be a new version of Model Y, which is the best-selling car yeah. you know, today. And second is Elon Musk is too busy with politics right now. So until yeah. November 5 comes and, you know, things get decided, I think, you know, that may still play some role with Elon getting, you know, involved with the speeches and everything. Uh, he's a little bit too vocal. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, 
I, I, I think it's going to be a sell-off. Um, because what is that we're going to learn? I don't know. Because they showcased everything that they wanted to showcase from a vision standpoint. Now it's all about the numbers. And I think uh, in the earnings call, I think even if you don't listen to the earnings call, I think listening to the Q&A session will be important because I think analysts are going to ask a lot of questions, tough questions there. Yeah, I think the lack of detail they gave throughout that event as well is um, quite outstanding. And the rumors around actual humans doing the kind of AI bot, uh, what's it called? Uh, yeah, but so but, but that is okay, right? I mean, um, so you're not buying Tesla stock because of Optimus today. Yeah. Well, no, but you... No, no, from a little... long-term investor standpoint, right? I mean, if, if your horizon is 10 years, that's a different case. Hmm. But, but for most... Long-term investment from an institutional standpoint is one year plus. So that, you know, from a tax standpoint, they are looking quarter over quarter. They are not looking to buy and hold like retail investors for 20 years. And that's why I think we might be heading down slightly just yeah. because of that, you know, lack of anticipation, I guess. Um, and back to the technicals, I think obviously we've got a bit of a bear flag here. We have had that big move down. Um, and I just think with the momentum of obviously everything around, as you mentioned, with Elon Musk being more into politics at the moment, I do think we just dribbled down and the, the attention turns on semiconductors and video. Um, we're going to touch on, on a video, I think, in a second um, around that sort of, sort of thing. Um, but 200 is not that far. It's only down here um, towards the 200 million average. And yeah. that will be an interesting spot for sure. And I think a lot of people will be adding there. Yeah. Uh, probably a few buy there. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, interesting. Definitely interesting. And obviously, we'll see what happens on on Wednesday. All right, let's move on to the next one, shall we? Yes, uh, next is Neo. It's right in your... Neo. Neo. Wow, yeah, I mean, what a week. <laughs> it's been it's been quite uh, predictable, I suppose, in a way. So, <laughs> fair enough. But you can see, obviously, the, this week's training, we've got Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. So pretty much last week, I said, oh, hopefully we get a bit of bounce here. A bit of a confluence of 20 million average and the trend line and i was you know i was right to say that of course is this support on two different things there two points of confluence but we have broken down below that which is also a completely reasonable thing to do um and i said i actually said last week on last sunday's one um if we do break the support i anticipate the 200 million average being touched pretty much immediately and what have we seen this week we've seen that 200 million average being touched uh, not once but basically twice um we did have some good um Price action going into Friday morning market was up five six percent before before market hours, but of course that means nothing in terms of the Chinese assets on the U.S. market. And subsequently, it was sold off down to kind of five twenty two. Basically, this is the point where everything should really tick. So we've got that potential golden cross coming through. We've got the two hundred million average support. We've also got that volume that we're kind of sitting at around here. Um, so there's lots of points of confluence around Neo. It just needs to just needs to be bought people just get excited again about it i'm not saying we're going to run to ten dollars anytime soon but um this is the point where people will buy it if not <laughs> if it does fall below that then we're probably going back down here unfortunately but the company itself is, is doing wonderfully so um i don't see the reason why not but we'll see what happens don't we you know all i'll say is uh my my leap calls are not doing well with neil so, all right. <laughs> when did I finish? Oh, man. I, no, but that's why it's a leap call. So I'm okay with, you know, holding it. Um, what, what, what's the time limit on it, though? Uh, it's uh, December 2026, and it's a $4 oh. leap call. Oh, you've got a while, then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and last thing to touch on is probably this trend line that I've kind of drawn. It's a really sharp trend line. So if we can get through that as well, that would be awesome. But time will tell with this one, uh, for sure. And obviously, keep an eye on the Chinese market and all the the news around the economy there as well, because that really does affect this stock at the moment. Anyway, that's enough time for Neo now. Let's move on. Next is, uh, you, can, you can do uh, Bitcoin first and then coin, or you want to do coin first and then Bitcoin? Uh, we'll touch on Bitcoin first. There's not okay. a huge amount to say with it, apart from just it's broken that kind of long-term trend line, uh, which is not loading on here. Oh, hang on. I've, I've opened up the wrong one. My mistake. Oh, I'll just open up this one here. BTC USD. That's the one. Yeah, so I like to pull up this one because I've got the trend line here. So really long trend line. It's kind of been formed since March. Um, just keeps hitting it consistently, which makes that even stronger as a base. We've blown through that this week. Um, the volume is out of this world, I think, compared to um, previous months and years, etc. So it's definitely happening to the upside at the moment. We're just kind of waiting to see where it goes, where it forms a bit of resistance. 
perhaps here, but I mean, you know, you don't really get that much volume over a weekend. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the only point I wanted to bring up, this kind of break of trend line, because it's a, it's a really serious break of trend line, in my opinion. You, I, you know, I mean, I, I think if Trump wins, uh, that might give a boost to Bitcoin, considering he was at the Bitcoin, uh, he spoke to the Bitcoin um, investors, I guess. Yeah, and the, the odds on at the moment, isn't it? So we'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's what, 15 days to go? We'll see what happens, you know. Yeah. Uh, then next is coin. Yeah. Touch on coin. I don't look at this one much. Um, much like Nate back in the day, I don't have many good experiences with coin. Coin. <laughs> yeah, he used to hate coin from the bottom of his core. I guess. Yeah. Get rid of these. And I think 300 was very, very psychological. So I just did that there roughly for now. Um, but you, you can see a similar sort of trend line here, but a little bit more dramatic, I'd say, because you can it's, a, it's an equity um, kind of trailing down here, we've probably got a bit of resistance coming at 230-ish. Um, but given the way it's moving and all the Bitcoin sympathy players are moving, you, you know, you could see that break pretty hard straight through. And then obviously a move towards 300 will be underway. Um, but in terms of kind of thoughts behind Coin, I don't actually use Coinbase anymore. I don't like it. It charges too much, um, basically, to buy and sell. And withdraw money as well. I don't know if it's still the same thing. It's been a couple of years for me. Do you use Coinbase at all? Uh, I actually, uh, I, I no, I think I don't use it anymore. I actually, unfortunately, and I, I'll be you know pretty open here. So when we had those um, um, bankruptcy on those platforms, what was the platform? I think Celsius had a bankruptcy. There was an yeah. FTX bankruptcy, and then there was another one. Um, forget the name of the platform. Uh, so no, yeah, so I got caught up with a couple of them, and then I was like, "Man, this is getting too much," you know. Uh, <laughs> so I decided not to be investing. So what I did, what I do now is I do invest in Bitcoin, but it's on Fidelity rather than on uh, uh, Coin. Yeah. So I, I, have, that. I may still have Ethereum on Coin. I'll have to check. I have not logged in for a while now. I, I do, I do trade Bitcoin, but I don't invest in it. I know that people are going to hate that um, so much, but I do trade Bitcoin. Yeah, no, I don't that. trade it. I just use, um, um, I just uh, invest long term on Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any thoughts on Coinbase or? Should we, should we, should we, should we, no, I, I, I have not. Uh, honestly, I don't. I, I don't see. I think that the trend line that's going to be the test, right? If you want, if you're looking for a breakout trade, you will have to make sure that that it breaks has a clean break, and then it retests before you get into that trade. Yeah. I, I, because. From here onwards, doesn't give me much on, you know, on the risk. The, the risk is higher than the reward here. Because we could oh, get a rejection sure. from the trend line. I mean, the move it's made, you can just see on the screen, basically, yeah. in the last seven trading days. Exactly. That's, that's a whopping 33%. Um, but what I would say is nice price action around the 200 million average, um, obviously coming up above it, coming back down, retesting it, and making that subsequent move. So that, that's a positive move. But now, again, it's one that's happened already. So Yeah, now, I mean, if you are into options and you, you like selling options, then you can probably look at selling option. What's the white line? Is that a 50-day SMA? Uh, 50, yeah, this one. You can look at a 50-day SMA for selling options, right? So what is that? What's the number for 50-day? Um, so, you know, 180. 180, yeah. Yeah, so 180, you will get a decent premium on that. So you, you can look at that if you're interested in selling options. I don't sell options on coin, but that's that's an, that's another um, opportunity. So hopefully that was uh, helpful for you, Alona. We're going to move on to the next one. Um, uh, next is actually SoFi. We just have it here, and then I have four other requests as well. Lovely. So, you know, funny thing, the couple of requests on Twitter are not coming up on the chat here, so I had to go look at the Twitter. Oh, okay. Good job yeah. you're doing that, because I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, that's fine. We have a couple of Cool. So far, I mean, we've had a bit of a flat week this week. Um, well, actually, no, that's Monday's trade action, isn't it? Well, um, a big gap up on Monday. Uh, we had a bit of a two billion pound investment, was I right? Something like that happened at the beginning of the week. Um, yes, yeah, they are doing a buyback, right? Two, two billion buyback. Oh, awesome. So, yeah, so that subsequent move about 10% on Monday, which looked really nice for my portfolio. I really enjoyed that. Um, obviously, pulled back a little bit naturally, which is fair enough. We probably had to dive down into the smaller time frames to see what. Is actually acting as a bit of support, which I can do and will do once I find it. I stand corrected. Uh, it's not a buyback. It's a two billion loan platform agreement with Fortress. Oh, I see. I knew it was two billion something. Yeah, uh, it's halfway there. Looks to be respecting the two-hour chart. Um, so one to watch, perhaps if it breaks to the downside. 
um, if you, you know, look into short-term trade so far, obviously a two-hour chart is a bit more of a short-term approach. Um, but near near resistance around kind of 10.50, as you can see here on the screen, let's make that exactly 10.50. So if we can get through that, I think probably, I think 12, I think I had it on my chart, was the next one in line. Do you have a specific resistance in mind after 10.50? I, 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 my, my, my goal, I don't have any specific resistance in mind because uh, right now I'm, I'm looking at that trend line. So it got rejected from that trend line, right? I mean, unless it breaks that trend line, I don't see. Uh, um, but there is also that gap that they made while with that gap up, right? So that's a ten percent downside for that gap fill. Oh, right. So after just looking at the monthly, there. Look at that. Okay, you just, the monthly. Okay. Yeah, no. So daily, which gap? This one. Daily, yeah, yeah. That's a ten percent. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So you you're looking for it to come down to that. Yeah, I mean, if it get if uh -huh. see if it was if it cannot break that trend line cleanly and you make that as a new support level, um, I think that, um, gap, that gap will most likely be filled. The earnings as well are coming up very shortly on the twenty ninth. Yes, I think it's ten twenty nine. But the last couple of earnings have been pretty yeah. pretty rough, kind of so far in terms of price action. You can see on the screen here. So the last one was pretty much flat followed by a move downwards and then the one before that a move downwards um, and then the move one before that really big move upwards and then came straight back down so you know what people might think is oh it actually pumps on earnings which it might do but it obviously always loses to gains um, at least up until this point we'll see what happens on this earnings coming up um, but plenty of good things happening around SoFi um, so yeah have a look at their fundamentals by the way really good in terms of growth in the last basically two years so it's good to see from from a company like that kind of disrupting the bank sector, yeah, financial sector. You know, actually, uh, I made a video on SoFi in September. That was, I think, third week of September, and it was it was a right nice setup on that one. And then we had this massive move. So I actually have already some of those trades that are still in progress, and I'm sitting nicely on those trades. Nice. So yeah, it's moved up twenty eight percent. Yeah, in the space of two weeks. Impressive. All right, what's up next? Uh, next up is Microsoft, ENVX, Bumble, and BSW. Those are the last four that I have on the list. Lovely. We'll, we'll cover those four and then we'll call it a day, I think. Um, so Microsoft, I actually don't have a trade, so that ignore that long position I had. To, I did have a trade. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm interested in that. I could still be in that trade, I'm not too sure. Um, but it looks like I said last week on Microsoft that if we get a bit of a volume push to get back above the trend line, then it should be okay. And we did actually, because this is Monday's <laughs> Monday's price action. But uh, but annoyingly, I'll zoom in a bit so you can see. Uh, but annoyingly, throughout the day, it got pushed back down, and then again, gapped up on Tuesday, got pushed back down, finished here, um, and then gapped down aggressively on Wednesday, but then got brought back up. So at the moment, Microsoft is all over the place. It doesn't know what it's doing. Um, and I think that's just down to um, obviously a bit of volatility in the markets, a bit unsure, maybe going into the earnings. You've mentioned it the last few weeks running around Azure, kind of not sure what's going on around you know, the success around that. Um, but technically, it just continuously looks bad. But I'll, I'll wait for a move to actually confirm my thesis around which way it's going to go. Uh, anyway, anyway, I'll let you talk. Um, no, I, I think for me personally, Microsoft is not showing strength right now because they are sitting right around the 200-day SMA, right just above 200 SMA. Um, it actually went below during the market hours and, of course, closed above it. Um, earning is coming up on 1030. I think the biggest concern that I have for Microsoft, at least in the short term, is they are not able to, they are not able to monetize the AI usage within the companies right so i give you an example so uh, there was a there was a lawsuit i think it was last year or early this year i don't know when but um microsoft generally used to sell so if you buy the office product you will get the microsoft teams as part of it so i believe salesforce slack they did file a lawsuit that this is anti-competitive so now they are going to separate the product. So what is happening for general enterprise companies? Now you're paying for office products, you're paying for these uh, communication softwares. And then on top of it, if you want 
uh, AI, the co-pilot piece, you have to pay separately for it. So within that, they have different um, uh, tiers of, you know, like one tier is like you can get the whole spiel of AI with they can do the meeting minutes and all that stuff versus one only, you know, just records. So, I, I mean, it's really, hopefully the earnings will give us a little bit insight in the future yeah. guidance on how they are going to reshape the the usage of AI by the by their customers. Because all that hype, it's not showing on the ground. And that's a lot of concerns from a lot of fans that it's not really converting. And you, you might say that, obviously, being one of the biggest companies in the world, they should have the intelligence and know how to actually convert that into something. So. It, it's- it's it's also not that it's it's th- so think about this so, so a lot of large companies or you know companies in healthcare companies in finance what ends up happening is like they are slow to adopt technology not every company is a tech company mm-hmm. so you know the the rate of innovation is not at the same level now jp morgan is a different type of a company it's it's i think it's the number one company that is using ai but it is not substantial enough to demand the price Microsoft commands today from a valuation standpoint. That's what I'm getting at. So we may think about long term. Long term is a beast, but we're looking quarter over quarter pricing. Interesting. It'll be interesting to see what they see on the earnings then. Yeah. Um, you'll be covering that one? You'll, you'll uh, most likely, yeah, yeah. If if I'm if I my schedule permits, I'll probably be covering it. Yeah. Awesome. Look forward to that. Earnings on the 30th of October. Yes. So not far away. What's next? EVX. I think that's the one you were looking at, right, for next week? I've had this um, I've had this a few times for next week. I'm not too sure about next week. But I have had this one on the charts a few times in the past on, on, on these sessions. Um, it's just really, really erratic. It, it moves a lot during the day, and that's fine. Obviously, that's, that's where we make most of our money, if you get on the right side of it, of course. Um, I do like the fact it's come up above the 200 million average. It's come back down and we tested it. Kind of may have missed that entry point around 1050 because now it's obviously sitting around 1150-ish. Uh, so that's already almost 10% um, on the move. But I'd have to dig into the kind of what's happened recently on, on the company. I haven't checked it out for about three months, I'd say, maybe slightly longer. Um, last I heard that their battery technology was going really well and making them smaller, faster, um, you know, all the good things around technology, smaller, faster is normally up there with the best. Um, but we do have a little bit of a trend perhaps starting here. So this is in the bottom one here and then bring that up there. So maybe it continues following that. Um, I did once have a trade all the way up to 25 ages ago. Yeah, I know it's, the graph is a bit messy, but basically caught that move almost perfectly. And I was really chuffed with that. Um, but it's... <laughs> Typical of these stocks, these smaller market cap stocks are very, very choppy. I don't really see much concrete, uh, anything concrete here in terms of pattern-wise, maybe just this trend line, see if it keeps following it up. Maybe wait for a break to the downside, perhaps. But like I said, I'd have to look into the company, see how it's performing in the last few quarters, because um, I haven't really looked at it, to be honest. Have you looked at this one? Um, nope. No. Nope. No. Okay. That's it, then. <laughs> Next is Bumble BMBL. B M B L. Yes. Is this the uh, online dating? Yeah, I think I think so. Um, seems to be going well. Mm. The chart, I mean, not the online dating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm married. <laughs> uh, it has a it has a hold rating from Wall Street that that I'll tell you, and a short interest of twelve point two percent. So what I can see here, it may be a trend line. See how far. Wow, this has been really sold off. Wow, wow, wow. God, it doesn't stop. So this was once a $38 stock, and it probably goes higher than that. So I guess it's one of those meme stocks. Yeah, I think uh, it, 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 I think when it IPO'd in 21, it opened, and it actually intraday, it hit $85 on day one. Blimey. Uh, we do have a bit of a higher low situation here. You can kind of briefly just see it above you there. Um, it's still got a lot of work to do for me to be interested. We do yeah, and also to... the RSI is, uh, I think, very close to 70 right now. It's at 67.83. So it's filling the gap. It's filling the gap. 
that's what it's doing though. Yeah, it's been in that gap. That's the first port of call, but on the bigger time frame, which I like to try and do more than anything to, before I go into lower time frames, is this trend line perhaps, but again, it's not the best starting point. It didn't touch here. It's only really touched here. So still, it's not the most concrete trend line. You could even bring it down to there, maybe a bit more, a few more touches. Um, but I mean, you could play around with lines for hours. But yeah, nothing, basically nothing concrete for me on my side of things for Bumble. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a shame. Yep. Next is BSW. So BSW. Yeah, B is a boy. What is that share though? BSW. Does it powerful for you? I've got something on Binance at the moment. BSW. Am I spelling it right? Yeah, that's the one. Let me look at the uh, chat again. No, sorry. It's S is a Sam BSW. SBS. SBS. Yeah. No, SBSW. Okay. I'm not the only one I've got confused there. I think the chat probably will Yeah, I, I, it is, I, I was confused too. So choppy stock, it gaps up overnight. So I'm guessing it's some sort of foreign stuff. What do, what what do they do? Let me see. Uh, they they are they operate a precious metal mining company in South Africa, US, Europe, and Australia. They produce gold, platinum, platinum group metals, including pa palladium, platinum, rhodium, blah 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 blah. Okay, so into that. Yeah, we don't cover commodities too much on this channel, but um, got a bit of a higher low going into a major resistance point there, being you know two hundred moving average. Um, so it could be a potential nice breakout trade there if you can get above that, come back down, retest it. I'd have to do a bit more digging into what the actual company do. I know you went over it slightly there, but I would want to have a look at their fundamentals and kind of how they operate a little bit before doing that. Um, another thing there, actually, you've got a little bit of head and shoulders, perhaps. Uh, if I could open the right thing, there we go. Mm, you're right, that's a uh... So you've got that to look at as well. Maybe resistance up here, at kind of five eighty five. Five eighty five. Actually, that's a pretty good move. Even if you got in and around here, I'd have to really pinpoint my entry. But that's about thirty two percent. Would you? Would you? Would you point an entry after that? What's that? Twenty SMA or fifty SMA? Fifty is the white one. The two hundred is the. Oh, so that's so. So basically, you will not get in before they have a breakout from the two hundred, right? Yeah, so I'd be looking for it to break out above here and then come back down and retest it and then make a move higher, um, potentially. I mean, you could have got in here, but no one was to know that would be a head and shoulders. It's not the most yeah. perfect head and shoulders you've ever seen. Um, but nevertheless, it is it's still head and shoulders. So moment of truth is the 200 uh, break, which actually, if you think about it, we covered a lot of stocks today which had a, which are in this setup. Yeah, strange, isn't it, given the market and the, the way it's been recently. Um, everyone's kind of hovering around, not everyone, but quite a lot of stocks hovering around their 200 million averages, which is exciting. Nice. I do like that. I've written that one down. I don't know who brought that one up, but thank you. Uh, that was on the Twitter. I don't know why that message did not pop up. So let me oh, see yeah. who... Whoever it was. It you. was Hef. Well, thank you, Hef. Hef underscore Eric. Awesome. Uh, let's move on to the last one. No, that is that was the last one. Oh, actually. was the last one? Okay, was the last okay. Let's do video quickly. We did say we we're going to touch on video, um, and we'll just we'll, we'll glaze over this one. I'll, I'll let you talk to Nvidia because I know you, you're. Done yeah, so thing. Nvidia is kind of sort of if you think about it, it's almost a double top here, right? Mm. And um, we have a nice little support level coming at one thirty one thirty two. Especially in the last few trading days, you will notice that we had three touches on that, actually four touches on that at that level one thirty one thirty two. Um, I'm doing it daily, right? This is the daily, yeah. Yeah, 130, 132. That's where the touch okay. is. So what I'm basically looking at, and if you draw the trend line from the from going from the bottom, which you already have it, it, I am expecting that we would have a rejection, come down, hit the trend line, go back up, hit rejection, and then see a clean break. Um, above that line of what is that? Double top line at one thirty nine seventy nine. That's the that's the that's the line that we need to break. Yeah, exactly. Come back retest, and then that is where my entry point would be for a breakout trade. 
this one. Uh, yeah, if you are going to be um, selling options, you know, there are a lot more trade ideas that I have. So the video will be posted, I think, on Monday. Yeah, so definitely check that out. Yeah, awesome. I'll definitely be checking that one out. I, I think just to add on to that, I think throughout the week, I've got loads of updates around price target increases from banks, from analysts around NVIDIA, which is not always, you know, a, a, you know, a sign to invest or a sign to trade it. Um, but it is, you know, a little bit of optimism throughout the kind of NVIDIA company really to get those kind of price targets. I'm really struggling to get my words out. Uh, but basically, it's good to see that all these companies looking at kind of 180, 190, 200, there's loads of them that have come recently. You're probably looking at them right now. Yeah. And, and you know, one thing that I look at, so from a, if you invest based on price targets, remember price targets is just a guideline that all these analysts throw around, right? So it's like uh, they are throwing a dart on the dartboard. So what you should do is you should actually check based on the analyst price target, how the stock has performed. And you will notice for majority of the stocks, there's always a gap between the line. So if you use Seeking Alpha, Seeking Alpha actually has that feature where they compare the price target versus the actual price. In case of NVIDIA, you will notice that the price target and the actual price of the stock pretty much stays you know, very close to each other. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the price targets are 150, I think Goldman Sachs had a 150. Uh, another, com I think Bofa came up with the 175 or 180, something like that. I wouldn't be surprised once we have this breakout because of the Blackwell chip. It's already, you know, um, one year has, there is no more demand. I mean, there is no more, they can't supply Blackwell chips for the next one year. The demand is so much. And they are also building out another uh, factory in Mexico coming up so a lot more i would say action for nvidia in the couple you know at least in the next few quarters it's not slowing down anytime soon no exactly right i think if you you know people should follow you on x if you want to post that picture because i think people will be interested to see it i know i would be so if you can somehow clip it and stick it on your x that would be good for people to see yeah absolutely um, awesome and um, we'll close out the stream there i think we we'll just look at Urban Warriors comment here. So video on the 12 hour has a 12 hour is <laughs> has a bullish green box on it. Yeah. Do you yeah. do you do you use I mean I, I have never seen 12 hour. I generally have seen four hour. I use four yeah. hour maybe a day daily and weekly is what I generally use. This is all I have. I've got one, two, three, four hours and a daily. Um but he might be using the extended hours chart. So I only used kind of in hour chart, that makes sense. Okay. Active hours. Um, so you might have different options there in terms of... Sean, Sean says, uh, I hope it rips to 150 this week. Um, yeah, it's not far away. Well, I mean, so for for if you are if you already have a call option from long time ago and hits 150, of course, you can make profit. But if you plan to get in, I think you need to make sure that uh, the break is clean and there's a retest before you get in for a breakout. That's what we're getting at. Yeah, and the uh, subsequent move there is 8.63% for for the 150 move that you're talking about there, Sean. So be interesting. Yeah. Interesting for sure. All right. Let's move back to the screen. So we're looking at for this week, Kay. Uh, just Tesla. Uh, that's this basically the the main play for this week. Awesome. I'll close this out then, shall I? Yeah. thank you once again Wolf, for letting us use the platform we really really appreciate it and we actually almost hit 2,000 viewers today as well which we we actually had no anticipation of hitting anywhere near that um obviously being a completely different day of being saturday although i think i'm going to leave this stream thinking it's sunday and that's completely fine with me because <laughs> anyway yeah so obviously next week we'll be live on sunday once again but we're going to be streaming about two hours later because i'm going to be on a flight at the time of normal recording um, but I will be here. I will be here to look through the charts and do the normal sort of thing. So I, we just love to do it, don't we, Kay? So We love it. Yeah. And next week, as, as Sean said, we will start a little bit later. Sean, thank you so much. We'll definitely cover more uh, tickers next week. So if you we did not cover your ticker request this week, make sure you come early and drop your tickers. We will definitely cover it. And, um, yeah, with that, enjoy trading, have fun, be safe, and we will see you next week. Yeah, trade safe and enjoy the earnings. See you all later. Take care.